There it is. Is this the episode? Will this be the episode where we finally get the basement? <laughs> yes. Whoa. I don't know if I'm ready for this though. Right. This happened. Is there any basement even left? Good thing we're not looking for an attic. Am I right? <laughs> Maybe I'm getting my hopes up. Maybe we're not actually going to get to the basement this episode. This might be one of just clearing away debris. So I still don't know what to expect really, except that it's going to turn everything upside down. This has been one of the craziest arcs of all time and so much has been sacrificed. I wonder if it'll be worth it. My only real guess is that this is going to be a gut punch for the scouts. He died. Oh, he has Bertolt's memories, right? He is Bertolt now. Welcome to your new form, Colossal Armin. Use it for good. Ooh. Can't help but feel like the basement will validate Bertolt and Reiner a little bit. If we're starting with Bertolt crying. How much do you remember? Oh, look at this. Ooh, the others. Brace yourself <laughs> for, for an interesting story. This is basically it, right? I mean, this is the people that are left. Not even sure you would call it the Scout Regiment anymore. His name is Duck Titan. Yep, <laughs> pretty much. That's how that went down. It was great and terrible. Let's not go back down this route. I think we're past that. Right, right. He didn't exactly choose Armin because Armin was the right choice. I've been thinking about this choice ever since I watched that last episode. And ultimately, my conclusion is that he made the right choice. And it's not because Armin is a better choice than Erwin in terms of the strategy. I still feel like weighing things in terms of the, the circumstances or outcomes sort of misses the point a little bit because there's no way to know who would be the best choice because you don't know what's coming in this world. So in the absence of knowing which is the best in terms of outcomes, you're sort of back to Erwin and Levi's philosophy again, which is like you just make the best choice at the moment that feels right to you and then you just see what happens. And now you're more in the domain of like values and concepts conscience. And in that moment as Levi, it felt wrong to him to bring Erwin back, considering all that Erwin has been through and realizing that he's almost completed his entire reason for living and that Armin hadn't. And the awareness that he was making a selfish choice and he had a chance to do something kind for others, right? All of those things are not really outcome based. They're just sort of like that felt right to him in that moment. And so the right thing he did was not bringing Armin back, but listening to his conscience and trusting himself and making that call, even though it was difficult. But since that's the case, it makes sense why Armin would have such difficulty understanding that. He wasn't in the moment. He wasn't in Levi's shoes. He's going to the mental place from which they were all arguing about you know, who's the better leader or whatever. When really, it was almost not about that at all during the conversation. It was it was almost 100% about their feelings. So, a lot of pressure on Armin, but it is what it is. You just make the best of it. Yes, Hanji's right again. It's not your fault you're in this situation in the first place. Right. Agree. Hanji's done such a great job these episodes, like cutting right to it. It's like, that's what it was, it happened, let her face it. That's true. Imagine being able to say this right now, after that choice. Wow. That's some real conviction right there, I have so much respect for that. <laughs> Yeah, the way you honor Erwin's death is by, like, just doing your best. And it's true, he'll never be Erwin, but that's sort of not the point. Like, no one will ever be Erwin ever in history or in any show because he's the greatest of all time. But Armin can do his own thing and be great and be what they need is the more important thing. By thinking about himself as the next Erwin, he's already failed. So the more important thing is, like, well, what can you do that's right? That's the better focus. <laughs> Give her some food. I have so much respect for Levi, though, being able to say that. <laughs> 
Maybe one small benefit of this is that they're now a very small unit. You know, they need a leader, and that'll be Hanji, but they also can work more closely together. Like everyone here is now upper ranks, right? I mean, there are no there are no people, so they're all in the top nine. And I feel like this group in particular is well suited for that. The fact that you even need a key now is is weird. What do you know, Trisha? I'm surprised Aaron didn't do it earlier. He's not the kind to be told what to do or what not to do. Yeah, the setup for this is insane. Imagine fighting this hard and doing all this for a total unknown, a complete mystery. Dramatic reminiscing intensifies. So this is setting up to be like, look at all the things we've gone through, right? Like, remember all these things that happened, but finally we're we're getting there. But I'm, I can't help but be like terrified for what's actually there. I don't think it's going to be what they think it is. Or maybe it is, but in a way that's unpleasant. This is going to be another turning point. <laughs> The basement was inside of you the whole time. It's so bizarre for me too because I gave up on the show after or sometime into the first season. So for me, it's been like what ten years or some, something like that since I I first heard of the basement. Here I am, all this time later. Basement key. The basement will likely reveal the mysteries of the world which Grisha couldn't mention to anyone. Hmm, mystery, mystery indeed. Hit it. This is probably the, the longest mystery I've ever <laughs> endured in my life in media. <laughs> I'm afraid to get my hopes up. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Very Levi. The key wasn't to the door, I guess. It's a normal basement. Time for a reading montage. Still honoring Erwin's legacy. That's how Aaron reads books. <laughs> Aaron doesn't really seem much like a like a book type. We need an N and Al reading montage right about now. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Secret compartment. That would have been so Attack on Titan, though. It was just totally empty. <laughs> Someone else read it for me. The most dramatic book opening of all time. I have no idea. No idea. You know what that feels like to me? That was a weird jump, a weird cut. Something about it feels like it's intentionally drawing contrast between the victory they should be feeling, but what the scouts actually feel. Like, it's a hollow victory, totally hollow. About Erwin, he did say he used to be more adamant about, like, expressing his views, that there, there were secrets being kept from them. I understand the feeling really well. It's almost like he's looking for help. You know, he's looking for someone to do it for him. But the more I think about Erwin, the more I respect him, because he realized that only he could do it. Only he could correct the injustices that he saw. And so he stopped talking about it, at least to that extent. He just took responsibility for it, which is sort of awesome. I feel like a lot of times that kind of ranting, that kind Kind of outpouring of, of emotion about certain issues in some weird way it's like an excuse it's like an escape out of having to do something about it it's like putting the emotion on other people hoping that they'll solve the issue and getting angry when they don't they don't solve it does that make sense that scene felt like scared erwin it's totally different from like confident erwin we got at the end erwin was right No! We got nothing! <laughs> we got what we already knew. So this was the episode where we get to the basement, but don't find out the mysteries of the basement. Erwin would have been validated. That that kind of hurts, though. This much, at least. I'm sure there's more. There's an end credit sequence, right? Yes. Wait, 
Is this the outside world? Oh no! Why do I feel like this is like a weird World War II thing? They're... They're original walls, I guess. Different kind of wall. Different kind of titan. Oh no. Oh no. The walls, huh? Is this whole show like World War II revisionist history? So there's a parallel between the walls in the in, in our world and the walls that we've seen so far with the Titans. And we also know there's a there's a racist thing happening here, right? Like the people in the quote unquote real world see the people inside the walls as like lesser, lower. My first thought is that there's an obvious parallel between Grisha and Eren. If the story really starts with this day and him escaping the walls, it makes total sense why Aaron is similarly motivated. It seems like there's a there's a comparison being made. And also very directly, it could be that it's Grisha's influence on, on Aaron, not only just his upbringing, but the fact that he has his memories, like he ate him. And if this is some sort of World War II thing, the mindless titans take on new meaning as well, because it's people being turned against other people. There's a sort of mindlessness that comes from blind worship or like blind faith that leads people to support injustices or atrocities. Another parallel is that people inside the walls see the the walls as their safety but really it's their doom kind of while they may like to believe they they can live there in safety it's just a matter of time before things come crashing down on them that's my guess at least about where where this is going but then there are all these logistical mysteries like what does all this mean for right now you know what does this mean for the current world i don't think that the whole thing boils down to like racism in the in the modern attack on titan world that's not reiner or bertholdt's motivation so there's still some threat coming from within the walls or some reason why some high stakes reason why people who are otherwise normal kids let's say would be willing to do things like kill their comrades for their plan for their goal how did we get from grisha in the real world to the world we started out in an attack on titan and it doesn't seem like it took that long unless there's something i'm missing because grisha is a kid in this historical version of of the world but not that old unless you know going back to this whole like there's some weird reality separation. Like this world exists in its own in some way or something like that. That's the only thing I can think of. Because the race family lived for generations, right? So something's not adding up time-wise. Although there are a number of different ways I could be getting that wrong. <laughs> but yeah, aside from like guessing at the plot, this was a very interesting experience for me because I think this was the first. This was the first time I myself have been wondering about a mystery for this long to which there's an actual answer. I don't remember when season one came out, but it was a very, very long time ago. And I watched far enough in to get the hint about about, you know there being a basement i think that's what made me turn off the show actually i'm like we're never gonna get to the basement it's a mystery box so that long slow walk through the through the town it was weird like i, I went back in time a little bit there um and then didn't really get an answer but <laughs> i'm sure that'll be next episode or maybe it's a whole series of episodes i feel like we're gonna be following grisha now i feel like we might get some backstory and the character wise one of my favorite moments of the episode was not related to the basement at all it was like the the intro on the wall with what's left of the scouts i talked a lot about the feeling of unity they share but for me it only gets stronger over time especially when they're like the last people left you know they're the last people that we know of fighting for this cause and it's a cause that they're not totally clear on yet but i feel like they're all unified i feel like armin took it really well and i especially love levi and hanji's talks the fact that levi would not regret his decision or not be pushed into anger by Armin sort of questioning why he made that choice, but rather being resolute in it and then like telling Armin not to question himself, telling Armin to think more clearly about what's next. And the same thing with Hanji, you know, putting things back into focus, like they didn't choose this. It wasn't tragedy of their own making and they did the best they could and they should continue to do the best they could. That for me is such a great message and shows that they're, they're very clear. Their hearts are pure in this matter. And it is great advice for all of them, especially for Armin, who will never be Erwin. And that's all right, because that's sort of not the point. The point is what's next? What is the challenge in front? Of you. But yeah, but the plot stuff will have to wait until next episode. I'll see you next time when things go horribly wrong for Grisha, I'm guessing, launching his journey out into the world. <laughs>